the inductor equation, the inductor equation is the current voltage relation that shows the connection between I L of T and V L of T. To derive it, we're gonna we're gonna start with the inductance equation. where the inductance L is a constant. There are two central principles. One, there's Faraday's law. And that says the induced EMF, which some, it's typically written something like this, in a closed loop equals the time rate change of the magnetic flux. Through an enclosed loop. So in this case, it's the rate of change of the magnetic flux is then equal to the induced EMF. So then the second part of it is Lenz's law. That says the induced current has a direction such that the magnetic field produced be induced opposes the change in magnetic flux B. In other words, we still have Faraday's law, but now Lenz's law comes in and adds a minus sign because it opposes as you've already probably heard in your physics 4b class, the name EMF is in atrocious name, period. We will change this name into 
circuit language. Where the induced EMF is now going to be defined as the induced voltage. And this induced voltage is now the inductor voltage, which we write as VL. Therefore, the Faraday slash Lenz law is written as follows. We're going to say that we have the derivative of the magnetic flux with respect to time. Is going to be minus V induced, which we now defined as VL. It's important to note this minus sign. is always present. So we have to be careful how we write the voltage for an inductor in a circuit. So now we need to modify this so that it's most useful to us. So to write out the important inductor equation we start with the definition of the flux we start with the flux equation So what do I know about the flux equation? We know that the flux is going to equal to the number of turns. And then the flux is how much magnetic fields are poking through this surface. However, we know that this magnetic field has to be directly proportional to the magnetic field. But if it's proportionally to, um, proportional to the magnetic field, it has to be proportional to the current. But what current are we talking about? The current through the inductor, which we then define now as IL. However, The proportionality constant between magnetic flux and current is the inductance L. In other words, we can then write that the magnetic flux has to be proportional to the inductor current with this constant L. And again, we've already defined that this inductance depends on the number of turns, the area of the bore, and then the length of the wire. With this information, the Faraday 
Lynn's law can now be written into a more useful form. In other words, we can write this as the magnetic flux is now going to be D L I L of D T. And this, because the inductance is a constant, is then D I D T. And there is that pesky minus sign that does not go away. We have to use the generalized KVL equation in order to remove that minus sign. So this is the important inductor, inductor equation. So let's look at this thing here. Let's try to interpret this. So the interpretation of the inductor equation, it follows very close to the capacitor equation in an RC circuit. So we should say then that the solution to the inductor current in an RL circuit is well studied in physics 4B. The reason why is because it is very similar to the RC behavior because it's very similar to the RC behavior. So what that means here is that the experimental behavior of the current IL is not linear. since the slopes of I, L of T versus T changes. For now, we want to ignore the minus sign, okay? For now, let's ignore the minus sign. But eventually, we have to deal with it. So we have to really understand what this saying here now. So, so if I look at what this thing is telling me here, is that I'm going to say that VL of T is going to equal to L D I D T. And you can clearly see here that the slope of I versus T, which is D I D T, is directly proportional to the voltage as a function of time. So this is what we really want to 
rest on as we move forward. Now we need we need to talk about language because language is misused. There is incorrect language that is used when dealing with inductors. It is common to say charging slash discharging an inductor. This is incorrect. So the reason why this is correct is because um, this is incorrect because the wires in an inductor, and by the way, any wire, Um, is not charged, but neutral. So you can't be charging a inductor. You can't be discharging an inductor. The correct language is we store current or decay current in an inductor. So now let's go through the details. So we've kind of already done this. We did it for the RC circuit, but we should repeat the same process for the inductor. So here we go. We're going to talk about storing slash decaying current. Of course, an inductor. So the thing we want to do here is that we want to plot, okay? So we want to plot the current. So we want to plot the current I L of T versus T and pay attention to the slopes. and interpret them. So let's do that. So I'm going to have to dry. So I'm going to start with storing current. And then over here, we're going to talk about decaying current. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to move these around to sort of equalize the spacing. So here I go. I have a current. So let's come all the way up here. And so as I do that, we're plotting time. And then this guy is the current of the inductor. 
So if I look at this, I effectively want to copy this and make the exact same graph over here. And we'll ad address that, that minus sign right now, or that extra L. So I'm going to assume that right here, this is when we reach the source current is the same as the inductor current. And right here, we're going to say the same thing. So now, here we go. As I increase my current through the inductor, it's going to have this exponential decay. Once the switch is thrown and the, res the, the current starts to decay, it's going to look very similar to the, the RC behavior. So now you can see that I have this curve that we want to focus on. So now we could start looking at this. So here's what we see. Look at the slopes. Right in here, what do we have? We have a, oops, sorry. We have a very steep slope right here. Just like we have a very steep slope right here. So that tells us that we have a rapid increase. If we have a rapid increase, that means we have a large induced current. Over here, we have a rapid decrease. And that tells us that this is a large induced current. So now if I keep looking at this thing, we can see here that over here, we're going to have a slope that's not so steep, just like we don't have a slope here that's very steep compared. So here we have a slow increase And that, that's a slow increase. That means we have a small, oh my gosh, I screwed up. I am talking about currents and that is incorrect. What am I talking about? I'm talking about voltages. Right, I am talking about voltages here. So this should be a large induced voltage. This should be a large induced voltage here. So now if I have a small current, that means that I have a small induced voltage. Over here, because this is a slow decrease, That means that this is a small induced voltage. So when I get to the very top of this thing, you could see that it has no slope here. So this means that this is zero induced voltage. This means zero induced voltage. So when I start to look at this and try to put this into words, then I'm going to say something like this. The 
opposition of the inductor is greatest at the beginning. Since the amount of change is greatest. So what is that opposition? It comes as the induced voltage. So in other words, if I have a large change that implies then that my induced the rate of change of this induced rate of change of the current then produces a large induced voltage as the change decreases To zero, the current approaches its final value. The opposing Inductor voltage is proportional to the small amount of change left. So if I write this out, it's going to say that I if I have a small change, then this tells me that the rate that we see this guy is going to be smaller. Therefore, it produces a smaller induced voltage. 